Hey guys, welcome back to the shack. Time for another introduction to a brand new uh, 20 watt class uh, diode laser. And this machine has some features that you're, you haven't probably haven't seen yet on the market uh, as far as the diode hobby laser uh, machines go. Uh, the machine was sent out to me by Two Trees and it is their TS2 model. Uh, this is a cool looking machine. Uh, attention to detail was something that this machine got a lot of. Uh, guys, they, 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 they've surprised me with a lot of things with this machine. So this is a pre-release model. It was sent to me before it was available in stores. So there may be some slight differences between the one that I received and the one you received. Uh, I haven't been told that there will be, but if there is, guys, just know that I received this one before they were available. So I'm gonna go over some of the things about the machine that I like and some of the features and things that you've got to look forward to. This isn't gonna be my project video for now. I just wanna kind of introduce you to the machine, show you some of the features and kind of share with you my thoughts as far as the machine goes since I've been testing it so far. So if that's something you're interested in, stick around. I'll be right back. All right, guys. So start off this video just so you guys know that not every experience with these lasers can always come out to be ideal. The only hang up that I've had with this machine so far since I put it together was there was some confusion uh, in the order and I ended up with a international plug uh, on, on both the laser and the air assist. So I haven't got to play with the air assist as much as I would have liked to because I had to wait on my adapter to show up from Amazon. I reached out to the company. They apologized for it, of course, but when you're dealing with an international market, it happens. It's a pre-release model, so I'm not complaining. But uh, I did, however, go ahead because I figure, you know, this is the first time this has happened to me, but it's probably not going to be the last. So I did go out and purchase myself an adapter. So now, regardless of what scent, I should be able to, to make it work. This was an easy fix. It's just the standard uh, computer plug, and I got plenty of those laying around. So I just grabbed one off of another machine and plugged it in and then I got this little adapter for the air assist and so now all is well. So all of the testing that I've done with the machine up to this point has been done using shop air regulated at 10 PSI to the regulator. So I'm just gonna kind of turn the camera around. I'm gonna show you some of the features of the machine. I'm not gonna do a lot of hands-on today with it. I have been doing a lot of testing with it. Uh, I will have a project video coming up soon with the machine uh, after I've done a little more testing and kind of dialed in the settings and just, you know, figure out exactly what it is that I want to do. It's been a busy week in the shop and uh, I'm just trying to work this stuff in as I go, guys. All right, guys, so I'm going to be throwing some video together. Uh, I've had this machine for probably close to a week now and I've done some testing with it. I've done the assembly. Uh, I tried to video the assembly, but cameras didn't want to cooperate with me. So some of that video is going to be left out uh, because the battery did not outlast my assembly. But guys, this is, the, this is the machine. Now, I know what you're thinking. That looks cool, and it does. Uh, I've still got a little more research to do about all the sensors and the technology that's built into the machine because it's been very busy this week. But when I got this thing in, I got right at it, and I went to putting it together and assembling it because I wanted to see what all features they built into the machine. Uh, a lot of you guys are familiar with Two Trees. They've got some really good machines out there. Uh, they do 3D printers as well as CNC machines. So they're not new to the game of uh, what I like to call shop robots. So that's something they're, they're actually really accustomed to and have experience in. So one of the first things that you notice about this machine, and it kind of jumped out at me too, guys, because when I was looking at the pictures that, the, the, that Two Trees had sent me of the machine, is all of the cool accents with the, the red. And it, it does add a little bit of uh, extra like appearance to the machine. Uh, you do have the red acrylic here in the front of the machine. Uh, the rollers 
they are all the red color as well as this adjustment knob. Uh, the linkages on the back have the red and it just looks really good. It, it almost has that sports car appearance to it. Uh, this machine came with a lot of bells and whistles, guys. The stepper here is secured at the very end of the extrusions. The belt runs through the extrusions, so there's no exposed belt here. Uh, this machine also uses four rollers on the connection points instead of three. Uh, that should lend itself to a little more stable connection with less chance of, uh, of, of movement and uh, you know those, those variations that can be associated with having that one leg, uh, that one roller up top. Uh, the assembly guys, I will warn you, if, you, if, you, if you're not a fan of assembly, you're gonna have to be patient with this machine. It does take a few minutes to put it together, but part of that reason is that it comes with a lot of these technological advancements. Uh, it does have the included drag chain, which adds to the assembly. Uh, but that's to me, that's a welcome add because it makes the machine look a lot cleaner and run a lot smoother. Uh, this machine also has the automatic focus as well as a power Z axis. And I've tested it in light burn, guys. The focus technique takes a little getting used to because you have to swap. If you're like me and you like to run absolute coordinates, you have to swap out of absolute coordinates. Uh, you basically have to run the machine out to where you want to focus it at. Focus the machine and you have to either then put it in absolute coordinates or rehome it before going back out to engrave. Uh, when you do the autofocus, it'll, it'll dip down it has this little tiny little bar here uh, that, that touches the material, activates a limit switch, and that limit switch kind of lets it know where zero is. Uh, and so whatever setting you have set up in the macro, uh, once it touches down, it's gonna raise back up to that setting and that's gonna be your focus. But you can also, in your layers and cuts, you can add and subtract elevation to the Z-axis on the different layers and that's really cool. It takes some getting used to. I still haven't mastered it and that's one reason I wanna wait on my project video to the point to where I can show you guys a project in which I can utilize the Z axis to its fullest if that opportunity presents itself. Uh, but it is, it is really handy to have uh, when cutting thicker materials. The only downside is because it is a diode and it is limited on the focal range you're not going to be able to go really, really deep with it uh, because at some point, you know, your module will end up impacting the workpiece. Uh, but I've, I've found that going down two millimeters on general plywood, I haven't had any problems with it pushing the wood or striking the workpiece. Four millimeters, it gets a, a little more uh, sketchy. You got to make sure your material is perfectly flat uh, to be able to pull that off, to go down to four millimeters below where the machine is supposed to be focused at. So that was a, you know, that was, that was a bit different, but if you're doing, you know, something like a mirror or something like that, then that wouldn't be a problem. But with wood, as we know, sometimes plywood especially can warp. So if that's the case, you may want to stick with the, uh, the regular focus because this little bar back here sticks down uh, a little bit further than the shield. And that guy can catch your material if you take too much off of the focus. So just a little warning there. I learned that one the hard way, guys. I was shoving material everywhere with that thing until I realized I was just bringing the focus down too far, causing the little, uh, the little sensor leg to uh, strike the material. Now, you do have a manual knob here that you can move it up and down with. Of course, what's the fun in that when you can do it automatically? Uh, and it's kind of cool uh, to do the autofocus and, uh, I'm gonna try to, like I said, I'm gonna try to do a little more in-depth video on this. This, the possibility of extending this machine, I think it's there. Uh, I think you would be kind of limited as far as the size of the extrusions, uh, but who knows? I could be wrong. Uh, but for what it, for for the way it's set up and the way it's configured now, it's done me a really really good job. Uh, the air assist pump, I ha like I said, I haven't got to use it a lot because the power cable that it came with, I had to get the adapter. But the power on these things is pretty generic. So if you've got another machine laying around, you can borrow a uh, power supply for the 
air assist or you know whatever i just chose not to do that and to wait until my adapter got here to show you guys how it works the one other thing that i did kind of have to improvise on guys was the the pump the outlet for the pump was a little larger than what the hose that goes to the air assist uh was and so i went and got myself an adapter that i had in my box already it comes with one adapter but it wasn't uh, substantial enough for this application and you could probably take this line and put it inside the other but since I had the adapter already I've adapted the larger hose that comes with the pump to the smaller hose that is connected to the machine and got that functioning like I said the uh, the power wire uh, I did have to get me an adapter so guys fingers crossed on this I have never used one of these adapters but uh, I suspect it should work. Uh, got it from Amazon. So let's hope it does anyway. Uh, but the, uh, the air assist pump works. It works well. It provides a pretty moderate flow of air. Uh, it's not gonna compete with my shop air. Uh, but then again, guys, no, no air assist can compete with what I've got coming out of the compressor. Uh, the air assist pump is relatively quiet and uh, very low vibration. So all in all, the machine works. The, but the one thing that you do have to remember to do, and I learned this the hard way, is you do have to remember to rehome the machine anytime you move the Z-axis uh, during the focusing using the micro that, that, that they tell you to put in there in the light burn setup. Now, I'm sure there's some ways that I can go about doing that and not cause issues with the uh, with the homing but that's something i'm going to have to learn that's going to be a bit of a learning curve for me because i've never had to uh, take that into account with any machines that i've ran before but the machine performs well guys i look forward to doing a few more videos with it i'm trying to come up with a project for it and i've also got to get an enclosure that will house these machines my 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 secondary enclosure uh right now is only 24 by 24 or so and it will not house these machines. I'm gonna be working on that hopefully this weekend so that I can get that done and get some of these machines in that enclosure to be able to test them a little better. Since I've got the air conditioning in here now, uh, don't wanna leave the doors open as much to let insects in. And so I'm gonna get have to get my enclosure upgraded to, to really do some rigorous testing on these machines. But all in all guys, the build quality uh, assembly, the way it performs so far, uh, I haven't had any issues with it. Uh, I'm going to try to put some of the other video that I made uh, with the machine in there uh, as soon as I can get that piece together. Look forward to another video with this machine, hopefully this weekend, and uh, a little more detailed information and some, some action shots of the machine working. But tonight, I just wanted to kind of give you guys a quick flyover and introduction to the machine and uh, let you know what's coming. So until next time, guys, be safe and have a good day.